All right, I've done a video about this guy before. His name is Ben the Baptist. He's a fake Baptist, and I'm going to prove that right here. He's totally alien to what traditional Baptists have always stood for. And in this case, the way he's doing that is his advocacy of a theocracy, which is a core, a, a very big teaching in the new IFB that essentially we should have a Christian theocracy. Now, I don't really identify with that term Christian because, you know, it's it, the, the early saints were called Christians in the book of Acts, it, Acts 11.26. They didn't give themselves that title. Proper title would really be Church of the Living God or just saints, pretty much. Uh, not Catholic saints where you have to be canonized by the church. No, every saved person is a saint. Sorry to all the, the papists out there. But speaking of Catholic, by the way, I'm going to show this ca the Catholic roots of this teaching of the, of the theocracy. But Ben, the, the uh, fake Baptist, calls for earthly theocracy, which is totally alien to Scripture, okay? Christ's kingdom is not of this world. There's no scriptural support for theocracies. The Catholic Church believes that the church is the kingdom of heaven on earth. This is You can see that in paragraph uh, 763 down to 766 of the Catechism of the Catholic Church, or CCC. 763 to 766 okay they believe that the church is the kingdom of heaven on earth and christ is represented by the pope okay so the catholic church has, has always stood for this heresy of of dominionism okay they they believe in the spiritual and the temporal the spiritual uh basically over the essentially the salvation of their people and the temporal meaning basically they have the sword of the government and there's all the scriptural support for this, okay? Uh, here's some here's some verses that little Ben, the fake Baptist, will kind of ignore. John 6, verse 15. When Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king, he departed again into a mountain himself alone. He didn't really accept this idea of them making him into some kind of earthly theocratic king. And further proof on that, John 18, 36, Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world, for if my kingdom were of this world, then would my serpents fight, that I should not be delivered to the Jews, but now is my kingdom not from hence. Notice that, then will my serpents fight. A common trait of Catholic theocracies is violence, plain and simple, because how are you going to achieve that theocracy? We well, got to violently take over a nation and enforce that theocracy by violence, hence the Inquisitions, hence all these other, you know, papal crusades. It's based on violence. The kingdom of God is a spiritual kingdom. Romans 14, 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. 1 Corinthians 4, 20. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. And Luke chapter 17, verse 20 down to verse 21. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation, Neither shall they say, Lo here, or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. It's a spiritual kingdom. It's not some kind of earthly theocracy represented by the Catholic Church and the Pope. Okay? See, you're not seeing it, because it's spiritual. But you see, a theocracy would be a contradiction of that. So here's a clip of little Ben the uh, fake Baptist. He's on this podcast with this lost atheist. And just making an absolute fool out of himself during this podcast. But here's a clip where he says, he outright says, I would love a Christian theocracy. Check this out. If that's what you want, is a theocracy. Yeah, I'd love a Christian theocracy. And we're going to get one during the millennial reign of Christ. Yeah. And if you thought that was bad. And by the way, he gives no scripture to back that up. He doesn't give, well, here's what the word of God says, you know, this, we need a theocracy. He doesn't give any scripture because there's no New Testament command. See, you'll find verses in the Old Testament where God is dealing with Israel as a nation, but not verses in the New Testament where God is dealing with each believer as individuals. That's the big difference. But he doesn't give any scripture to back up his, his point. There's no such thing as a biblical theocracy. Plain and simple. Not, especially not in the New Testament. So... But here's the next clip where Ben the Baptist says he wants a theocracy because then you'd have the the, the sinners of Sodom, Sodomites basically, stoned to, the, uh, stoned to death. Sorry, I got a bit of a tongue ulcer. Makes it a bit, uh, a bit painful to speak. But yeah, here's the clip. And really, we were talking about homosexuality, I thought. Uh, I guess we oh, so, okay, let's, yeah, so yeah, we can talk I, about I, that. Okay. Yeah, so, I mean, the, the, Bible, the Bible teaches in Leviticus chapter 20, verse 13, yeah. that you know they should be they they should be put to death it's a it's a uh, you know there are, there are certain sins that are a sin unto death and that's one of them now we don't live under a christian theocracy but if we did then sodomites would be rounded up and stoned to death yeah ben the baptist just pretty much exposed that he is not any kind of baptist in any 
a scriptural or historical sense of the word. Why do I say that? Because Baptists, the one thing that has always made Baptists distinct is their rejection of theocracy and their support for the scriptural doctrines of uh, separation of religion and state, to show it from the word of God. But historically, Baptists have always supported religious freedom and separation of church and state, freedom of speech, and all those other biblical concepts. Okay, uh, Baptists were never the ones that would support. See, it was the Protestants, it was the Catholics and her Protestant children, because Protestantism is just simply a Catholicism light. That's all that it is. It was, it was Catholicism and her Protestant children who were trying to build up earthly theocracies. You got John Calvin with uh, Geneva, Martin Luther over in uh, Germany. I, I mean, it was the Protestants and the Catholics and the Baptists were distinct in the sense of they always believed that, no, it's not our job to enforce, you know, the, the gospel by the state, you know. You know, there's no, again, they understood the fact that there's no scriptural command, that the kingdom of God is not, you know, it's not physical, it's spiritual. And Christ's kingdom is not of this world. They've always been apart from their Protestants and, and, their, and their Catholic children because of that support for church-state separation. All the prominent Baptists of the time from the 1600s, 1700s, 1800s all stood for liberty of conscience and separation of church and state. But you see, you have the new so-called independent Baptists who are going against that and just joining up with their Catholic, you know, essentially their Catholic masters, because I do believe there is some kind of Jesuit connection in this whole new IFB system. Yeah, they speak against Rome, but theocracy is always what Rome has stood for. And and they line up with Rome on plenty of other areas as well. So I wanted to point that out. Don't be deceived by this new IFB movement, because they have nothing in common with either the, the traditional independent Baptist movement or just the Baptist movement as a whole. So don't be deceived. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.